Hello friends and welcome to India Interacts. I'm Deepa Kameen. I'm your host for today's discussion on how India can innovate better. And we have with us today to talk about this topic, Bharat Ratna Award winner and India's missile man, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam. Please give a warm welcome. <laughs> Dr. Kalam, welcome to the show and thank you so much for coming here. I know you were here at IIT recently also. You have spoken and written a lot about innovation, about how India can be a developed country. And of late, you've written very specifically just a few days ago about how India can be a powerful country in 2030. Could you tell us and tell our young audience here what innovation means to you, why it's important to India, and how you view India as taking innovation and moving forward? Uh, thank you, uh, my friend Deepa Kameen. And also, I'd like to greet uh, uh, Professor R. K. Shogankar and uh, all the IIT students. I'm very happy in your company. And uh, first of all, friends, I felt uh, I must uh, define uh, discovery, invention, and innovation. Discovery, invention, and innovation. What are the relationship I want to, so that we understand what we are going to discuss. Now, discovery, as you all know, relates to finding new laws, a principle, and concept. Example, Raman effect is a discovery. Einstein energy equation is a discovery. Chandrasekhar Chandra's limit is a discovery. OK? Now, invention from the basic theory evolved Finding new system, for example, Graham Bell's telephone is an invention. Graham Bell's telephone is an invention. And Thomas Alva Edison's light, light and bulb, uh, it is an invention. Marconi's wireless system is an invention. Now, what is innovation? Question is, what is, what is the relationship? The change, the change that creates a new dimension to performance is the innovation. Change that creates a new dimension is the, is the innovation. It's the definition for Peter Trucker. Now, example, you take telephone. A telephone was Graham Bell. Telephone and wireless communication is equal to, you may get a mobile telephone and its variants. And its application is a great example of innovation. That is the mobile telephone Mobile, uh, mobile, uh, mobile system, mobile telephone is becomes an innovation. Internet is invention. Internet is an invention. Cable television is another invention. Using internet to deliver cable TV over a computer is an innovation. Followed? Yes or no? Dr. Manilal Bowmich's invention is the eczema laser. He invented laser. The laser itself discovery. Laser is a discovery, but Dr. Maninal Baumik invention is eczema laser. And application of eczema laser for eye surgery is innovation. Can you see the difference uh, between the discovery and the invention and the innovation? You got it? Yes or no? Yes. Now, let me ask uh, a professional choice, friends, among you. Pro what are your professional choices? So that my discussion will relate to innovation linked to your professional dream. So I want to ask you, how many of you like to pursue research career? How many of you? So, okay. Good, good number. Good. No, I'm very happy. Good number. Okay. How many of you, same hand should not lift. <laughs> how many of you like to enter political governance, political governance area? Political and governance area. Nice guy. Nice guys, nice guys. I'm very happy to see young fellows want to enter the politics, make a big change, okay? Next one. How many of you would like to become a general entrepreneur? General entrepreneurs. General entrepreneurs. Okay. How many of you want to become social entrepreneurs? You know, there's a difference. You don't make a lot of money in social entrepreneurs. Whereas, uh, <laughs> entrepreneur, you are an entrepreneur. Yes, sir. So, they make a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how many of you want to become a social entrepreneur? Okay, 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 now I know where you are, okay? Now, friends, let me talk to you, friends, the story of invention 
inventors, discovery and discoverers. You can interact with me. Let us study the important inventors and their invention. When I say Wright brothers, immediately we remember, what is that? Yeah. Aircraft, the two brothers, when people said it cannot be done, they have done it. George Eastman, can you think of? Film, film, film. George, George Eastman, color film he discovered. Thomas Edison, just now I told you, the light bulb. They are all, that's all innovation and inventors. Alexander Graham Bell, Terry Ford. So these are all invention and inventors. Let us go to discoverers and discoveries. All but Einstein, energy equation, E equal to mc squared. Now, Srinivasa Ramanujan, great mathematics man in India, produced number theory. He gave a shape to number theory. Chandrasekhar Subramaniam, black hole, and also he established the Chandra limit. Use a small equation. Using the Chandra limit, you can calculate how long sun will shine. Now, all of you want to remember, all of you want to remember what I am saying, because if you want to be inventors, if you want to be discoverers, if you want to be innovators, I am going to give you what type of, what type of characteristic you must have. Invention and discoveries have emanated from creative minds that have been constantly working and imagining the outcome, the telephone, he was imagining the outcome, imagining the outcome in the mind. With the imaging and constant effort, all the forces of the universe work for that inspired mind, thereby leading to invention discoveries. Now, higher the number of creative minds in an, in an organization, the best results of innovation will emerge. I just wanted to ask you, uh, yes. that was a good sort of introduction to people about the differences between innovation yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and discovery. I'd love for the students here to get a little bit closer to you personally, yeah. meaning from your couple of projects, major projects that you've been involved in in the past, we'd love to hear some interesting stories that involved innovation. I know you've been involved in some very exciting projects. Yeah, first uh, let me talk to you. A story, then I'll come back to me. The story of IIT graduate, IIT graduate transforming into an inventor. Okay, you want to hear that? Yes. How many of you want to hear? All of you. There is doc, Dr. Manilal Bhomik, he's a PhD in quantum physics from IIT Kharagpur. Okay, he was invited by Professor Macmillan for doctorate research at UCLA. Is a I, it's a California Institute of Technology, Los Angeles. Dr. Bowmik comes from a village, you note this one, Dr. Bowmik comes from a village where he strayed in a mud house. He explains his story in the book titled Code Name God. It's a paperback, Code Name God. Code Name God, he has written a nice book, God. The professor who was his guide, that's Macmillan, Professor Macmillan, who was his guide during the postdoctoral days, used to give him time, used to give him time between 2 a.m. and 3 a.m. every week for two days in the library of the university. I, how many of you have patience to go to 2 a.m. 3 a.m.? That's real research. He gave two hours time and, uh, and between 2 a.m. and 4 a.m. he came. And he used to go and meet the professor Burmi goes used to go and meet the professor positively at that time for discussing his project. Concurrently, Dr. Burmi was working in North Prop Corporation Research and Technology Center in Los Angeles, LA. He was working there. During his research with his co-researcher, world's first efficient eczema laser, which later found extensive use as an immensely popular LASIK corrective surgery, was invented. That's the inventor Burmi invented the eczema laser. Uh, then it became a innovation for eye surgery, LASIK eye surgery, it is used today also. And later it got an application for eye surgery, throughout the world is used. Dr. Bermick, successful innovator and celebrated innovator. Of course, you young fellows can dream for his life how to build five mansions in California. He has built five mansions in California. How do you like it? <laughs> five mansions in <laughs> California, beach is built. Because when he discovered the eczema laser, he became a rich fellow. Okay? Okay? <laughs> <laughs> so, now, 
the since the IIT campus, Delhi AIM, a breakthrough had been achieved by developing composite knee joint IIT Delhi with reduced weight and flexible joint. It is cost effective, easy to wear and is in production. It is going to be, it is already in production. IIT Delhi team with Professor Bharati Pat, now she is not there, Professor Bharati Pat and Professor Kaul has developed a C-band phase shifter uh, for face array radar in the country for the first time. We all use that C-band phase shifter for building a huge radar. One of the great innovation that happened, which I am involved, you, you asked, you know, uh, Deepak, you asked uh, yes. what I am involved. One of the great innovation that happened with two, na two nation partnership is the development and production and marketing of the first supersonic cruise missile in the country. Now, this supersonic cruise missile, you know, I was at that time working scientist, okay? It was the difference between a working scientist and non-working scientist. <laughs> so, when I was working in my laboratory, and uh, I visited my Russian counterpart, and uh, he's called Professor Yefabo. He showed me number of labs, and I found when it is a secret lab, when I found it's a defense laboratory, like mine, I was dealing. When I saw the item, there is some core competence uniquely I have not seen any lab in the world or in my country. So I noted the unique, unique uh, technology level two area we identified. Then I invited Professor Yafomo to my labs at RCA Research Center in Maratha Hyderabad. He came and he visited there. And uh, he also located two unique core competence. Then we found that Russia has got two unique core, core competencies and India has got a two unique core competencies. And if we, if we bring them together, a unique system may emerge. That's how the first India's first supersonic cruise missile emerged with the investment of $300 million. Today, it has become $10 billion business. Uh, this is really uh, innovation. There is innovation technology, uh, innovation marketing, and innovation in uh, production. All the three areas there. Okay. I think uh, you know maybe based on what Dr. Kalam has said and based on the response I'm seeing, maybe we can go directly into a Q&A session here. It'll make it a little bit more personal and yeah. more exciting Be for everybody. Before that, before that, I want to tell you innovation. Where are we? Hmm? Innovation. Where are we? India, where are we? You must know that. So that you guys get ready uh, to do better things. Innovation index is 2011. If you go to internet, you get 2011. Innovation, Switzerland number what? Innovation index. Okay? You are happy? Sweden number 2. Singapore number 3. Finland 5. USA 7. Canada 8. Germany 12, Japan 20, China 29, India, can you guess? 62. India 62. Now the question, asks, question is, how to convert the 62 into first 10 innovation index? Is it not? It's a good ambition. You must graduate with all the young people when I see. Uh, definitely you must graduate to index number 10. Now, when I was a president in 2007, one great lady came from Finland. At that time, Finland 2007, number one, index number one. I asked the lady, tell me, how do you make your country number one nation in the, in the innovation index? She told me, education, education and right type of education and women education. That's what he said. Education, education and right type of education. Right type of education. That means creative education and women education. This is the answer he gave. So, we need for innovation a creative education, capacity building, global human cadre, my recent experience, the evolution of innovation. Now, you can ask me questions. What, shall we, all of you repeat with me if you don't mind? Will you? Yes, sir. Will you repeat or no? Yes, sir. Imagination, Imagination. Leads, to leads to creativity. Creativity, creativity. Blossoms, blossoms 
thinking. Thinking, thinking, thinking provides, provides knowledge. Knowledge, knowledge, knowledge results, results innovation. Innovation, innovation. Innovation make the nation. Make the nation. What? Innovation make the nation? Great. Great. Innovation make the nation great. So this is creative education. Any campus, any campus, what we need, if we want to innovation index to go first to 10, imagination is to creative. That means imagination, the, uh, the classroom should be imaginative, the teachers should be imaginative, syllabus should be imaginative, okay? And the students also imaginative. Creative blossoms thinking, starting point creativity. Thinking provides knowledge, knowledge makes results innovation, and innovation makes the nation great, okay? So if this you have understood, then we have to work for it, how to make the nation in the, within the 10 numbers in five years' time, okay? Will you do, all of you? Yes, sir. Otherwise, I'll catch you. Uh, we have to take a little bit of a break. Please don't go away. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Uh, Dr. Kalam, you were talking about what it means for us to take innovation to a, another level, to get to level 10. Well, I believe uh, if you want to create your education, uh, just now I told you, first thing is the imagination is to create you like that. You all repeated with me. And uh, the parameters we need to just lift the index, creative, uh, creativity and the education system. Creativity in the education system. Two, primary education and before. Everywhere creativity has to come. Secondary education, higher education. In today's education, if you don't mind, I want to repeat it. In today's education system, biggest reform needed is primary education. Because that is the age 15 and the children have to be creative. If they have to be creative, you need a classroom creative, a syllabus creative, and teacher has to be creative. So that's the area we have to concentrate. Now, the, regarding the higher education, like what you guys are doing, higher education, the following aspect will be considered. That is uh, like IIT education, university education. Uh, the, what, regarding the higher education, the following aspect will be considered. What are they? Number one, research and inquiry. Research inquiry, if you index, the, that is index of innovation go to 10, research and inquiry has to be one of the, one of the component of the teaching and research. Second one is creativity and innovation. Third one, use of high technology. Fourth one, entrepreneurial leadership. Fifth one, moral leadership. And all the five, uh, five, five components make the creative education. Okay? Now, the, now, I want to tell for the student, young people, history has proven, history has proven that those who dare to imagine the impossible, are the ones who break all the human limitations. In every field of human endeavor, whether science, medicine, sports, arts or technology, the names of the people, just now I listed some of the names, the names of the people who imagine the impossible are engraved in our history. By breaking the limits of their imagination, by breaking their limits of their imagination, they change, they change the world. You take C. V. Raman, you take uh, Newton, you take Einstein, you take Chandrasekhar. By breaking the limits of their imag imagination, they change the world. The great, if you want to hear some examples, want to hear some examples? Yes, Example. Now I'm going to give you two examples. One is uh, the childhood. That young age, how, how they thought, what made them to imagine creative. Two story I'm going to tell you. When Albert Einstein was five years old, five years boy, his father showed him a pocket campus. Einstein realized that there must be something in the space previously thought to be empty that was moving the needle, later stated this experience made a deep and lasting impression. They you know in campus, if you see, the needle moves. Why it moves? Oh, he was a five year boy. So that created in his mind curiosity. As he grew, Einstein built models 
and mechanical device for fun and began to show a talent for mathematics. Now, in 1889, family friend Max Talmud, a medical student, introduced a 10-year-old Einstein to a key science, key, key science and mathematics textbook. It's called Euclid's Elements, Einstein, Elements, Euclid's Elements. Einstein called it holy little geometry. This, uh, this geometry book, small book he got when he was a 10-year boy, he calls it holy book. Einstein began to understand deductive reasoning and by the age of 12 he had learned uh, Euclidean ge geometry. Soon after he began to investigate calculus. His father intended for him to pursue electrical engineering, but Einstein clashed with the authorities, resented the second regime. He later wrote that spirit of learning and creative thought were lost in the strict memory oriented learning. So he became the new person because the two small books, uh, they changed their life. Now when everybody consider sea travel as an experience of voyage, when Sir C. V. Raman was travelling from UK uh, to Calcutta, to London to Calcutta, he saw uh, the sea was blue and sky was blue in the horizon when sun was shining in the evening. He asked why and he got a Nobel Prize. Okay. That means the, he was pondering why the horizon where the sky and sea meet looks blue. His research resulted the phenomena of inelastic scattering of photon in the light. For this discovery, C. V. Raman was awarded Nobel Prize. Any questions now? Yeah, please ask questions, folks. Good evening, sir. What is the problem with the research environment here? Why, why is there so much of be it politics, be it uh, so much of leg pulling or uh, why is it not so uh, creative? No, my view, what is your dream? Tell me, what is your dream? She wants uh, innovate, to innovate, innovate, for innovate for India. You know, if that is so, you see, it, um, in the globalized world, uh, go knowledge workers movement definitely will take place, okay? Whether you are from India to another country or another country to India, knowledge workers will move. That is means uh, people who have acquired the knowledge, there will be movement will be always there. Just like Indians will go, the people will come from other, other parts of the India, okay? Uh, so, this, this phenomena you have to accept. How do we create a creative environment? My feeling is, I have seen, I went to Harvard, okay? A uh, few weeks back I was in Harvard. In the Harvard, I visited, they called it Engineering Applied Science. The Engineering Department, they called it Engineering and Applied Science. There I saw three laboratories. One is innovation laboratory. In the innovation laboratory, the student, it is nothing to do a syllabus. The students at the evenings, at the holidays, they go and they can work uh, themselves. With, they can have their partner. For example, I saw in the innovation laboratory at Harvard, uh, three students, one from MIT, next campus, another from Harvard, another from industry, they were working on how cable TV can be removed. That means how cable TV can work via the internet, like, uh, like internet, uh, that is IP, IP, that is internet uh, protocol in telephone system, how we can work the, the cable TV uh, in the internet, they were working. Then I went to another laboratory, another laboratory, that is uh, uh, two professors I have met, uh, two professors, and uh, one professor is a biotechnology professor. He is working in the IT area. I, how the biotechnology can be used at the IT area. Similarly, the IT professor working in biotechnology. So what it means is the, the compartmentation in our uh, system has been removed. No iron curtain between the departments. Second thing is apart from your, what you are doing, there should be a provision for the students to innovate. That means in the, the, in the time, free time, they must put their ideas in a laboratory, innovation laboratory should come. You have a mic there. Why there is no setup and no institution in the India that which comes to place people for research, for, for alternative fuel energy, alternative yeah. sources of energy? No, it's a good point. You, you've got a very good point. You see, what is happening, 
you know when you come to iit if you are outside you are coming in your car or scooter scooter one liter petrol generate 2.8 kg of carbon dioxide one liter okay that the point you are saying then imagine throughout the world throughout the world they are using cars and trucks per year they generate 30 billion tons of carbon dioxide that means we are damaging the ozone and uh, then the environment warm that is uh, the, the type of climate change is uh, we will be accelerating so i have suggested what is called energy independence by 2030 we must go for energy independence that means uh, we go away from fossil fuel uh, that is uh, f- that is uh, p- fuel uh, diesel uh, petrol and uh, coal and this type of thing you graduate from that to solar power a uh, wind power hydro power and nuclear power and biofuel and biofuel this is my 2030 we should achieve so that 50% of fossil fuel usage can be reduced and also it is estimated by world energy forum another 60 years time the availability of fossil fuel oil petrol coal is going to reducing because it's not a renewable energy so we have to get ready now itself for a clean fuel clean fuel solar power wind power hydro hydro, um, hydro power and nuclear power and biofuel okay it's a good idea okay next next yes sir uh, my name is abhishek i am fourth year physics student uh, when it was pointed out that research environment is not good here and people are going abroad you said that it's a phenomena that people go abroad and from abroad people come here but uh, here i don't see any any phd student from abroad but i see 95% of students here going for a phd abroad don't you really think that the research environment here is demotivating well there i say it's a fact the uh, india's uh, in uh, in the education inst- higher education institutions uh, that's why i was telling you the syllabus particularly undergraduate syllabus for iit or university a uh, part of it has be a research oriented it's not only post graduate or phd you have to for research that research environment we have created that that means what is the solution the solution is i have seen whenever a, a experienced the higher researchers level professor uh, moves in the environment in the university students environment he is like a magnet he attracts student for research not only from the same institution from multiple institution even from abroad so the solution to that we have to create a research environment uh, that means we have to create the teaching environment after all what is teaching the higher the research higher the teaching capacity so research teaching research so my personally be- I believe that our universities and our iits time has come we have to give priority for a research environment research but you are all fighting against the syllabus your syllabus you are fighting so the 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 the, the reform has to come from the, uh, the the evolution of the new syllabus and the evolution of new type of teaching uh, teaching uh, system and also the classrooms one question more before i take a break and then we'll come back how about yeah, in the back there good evening sir my name is rachit i am a finally student here so uh, do you think that we as a society are set up you know to uh, actually uh, you know tackle this problem and not you know tell our tell the new graduates to go to a job because it is safe and then you know uh, once uh, say a venture fails we do not really look upon that person you know with a very high regard that is regard to the society uh, thought process and secondly with regard to the infrastructure in terms of the funding or support from the government or you know ge- the general ecosystem so do you think we're equipped to actually you know promote people to excel i have seen the future going to be a convergence of since you are all technologists con- convergence of technology there is bioscience information science and in, and uh, nanotechnology and the environment echo all the four is going to be converging so this is going to happen and uh, the environment you have to create for that is there should not be compartmentation 
between uh, the departments. That means even uh, the graduate, undergraduate level, there should be six months project. The syllabus should be carved out so that the multi departments, multi technologies, they become to do a project and before going out of the campus. That means they are not going as a single technologist because in future you will find they are looking for system people. Wherever you go, when industry or anywhere you go, have you done a system design, system development and or you are unique in a particular research they will ask. So it looks to me we have to create an environment for the such type of uh, research and also system level development. That means interfacing multiple technology. That we have to do. Uh, we have to take a little bit of a break. Please don't go away. We'll be right back in a few minutes. Welcome back to Rajasabha TV's India Interacts discussion series. Our topic today is how can India innovate better? And our distinguished guest, Dr. Kalam. We're going to continue with our questions. Yes, how about there? Good evening, sir. Uh, I am Vaibhav, a second year, right? Sir, there are steps which need to be taken by the government. There are steps need to be taken by the system. Sir, what according to you can we incorporate into it so that we can bring a change to it? We as in the students? Yeah, the students. What can the students do to bring more innovation and entrepreneurship? I think that's what your question yes, was directed sir. towards. See, I, I, as I told you, uh, it is a, you, it's an environment. You got a syllabus, okay? You, IIT has got a syllabus. So the teachers here, they want to complete the syllabus so that you guys get good marks, okay? So that's the focus. Now what I'm saying, the syllabus, skew a room, that four-year syllabus, that give a room, uh, some sort of a spot should be there out of that six months or nine months period so, so that the creativity of the students uh, emanates and that should be a multi-departmental uh, work. Like for example, biotechnology, information technology or biotechnology and nanotechnology or biotechnology and ecology like that, you know, that interface should take place. For that, yeah, instead of I am asking you, I, will, I have to ask that how the syllabus has to be modified, how the teaching, teaching type of uh, teachers, the type of quality teachers, we have to research oriented people, we have to also, uh, uh, we have to enlist uh, so that students will converge to them, the, where the research is there. But if uh, there is a syllabus demanded you to go through the syllabus and uh, appear for the exam, you don't have time for the research. But if you got a time, for example, on weekends, you can have an innovation laboratory. Here, for example, a student's community council can think of an innovation laboratory involving multi departments. That innovation laboratory, students can go and later hours can evolve their own ideas, thoughts, and creativity. Some product or software may emanate. So it is in your hand also. Yes. You're talking about creativity and fostering this environment. Perhaps we should be starting this in school. I mean, I've heard somewhere that the current education system that we have is something that happened during the Industrial Revolution where to keep the children of factory workers engaged, they would have one person and all these people sit, you know, 50 children or 100 children sit and study from the same person, um, which at some level actually stifles creativity because you, it's, you're part of this monotonous system. You go every day, you take these classes, and then you just sort of move on. Um, what are your thoughts on this? A few months back, I visited a village in Andhra Pradesh. In that village, I was invited to visit uh, you know, one teacher school. You know one teacher school? Uh, there are some places, there's one teacher. Uh, she, she takes five, five class up to class five, but 30 students. So I went to that class classroom, it was 7 o'clock in the evening, so full moon night. This teacher got all the students outside and showed the moon moon and put in the, a, a blackboard, a paper blackboard she has put there, started explaining, moon, what does it do? Why the full moon, what's the significance of it? How much time it takes 
to orbit the earth she didn't stop the earth it rotates own axis how much time it takes she asked the students and some students responds also then a day and night how it comes and then this lady, the teacher asked the earth orbits around what then some students say it is around the sun how much time it takes the one student said it is one, one year nearly one year 365 days you know this is a creative education this is a creative education creative classroom and a creative uh, teacher okay so this is the type of environment you have create followed yes there sir my name is srinivas gaud i am mtech final year student uh, after mtech we have two opportunities uh, two ways in research one is a uh, industrial research second one is uh, in institute wherever we go do phd you might have seen many industrial laboratories and uh, research laboratories uh, i want to ask you that uh, which uh, research career is, is better because in industry we can work with the uh, people from different fields different fields and from in the research laboratory only one type of fields would be there so which one you suggest to us sir? the iit central government funded okay now most of the universities that are highly research oriented because of industries have tasted the research results because the industry comes to the university or iit if they know that you can provide a product or a system or a software so iit should aim at providing credibility to the industry iit can do a great research that will be useful for the industry so this is my view so i want to know who is a good teachers well it's a good question for example when i was a 10 year boy in rameshwaram primary school is my teacher was science teacher was shiva subramani ayya i was a 10 year boy fifth class when the teacher enters we saw he radiates knowledge and also he radiates purity of life you know the two quality i saw in my teacher that radiates knowledge and radiates purity of life is a gandhian purity of life i saw so the students young age they for good role model is a teacher that teacher particularly primary secondary school system we need a great teachers okay with knowledge and purity of life questions yes so uh, myself swati i am a mtech final year student uh, i went through this article on uh, human development index in consumption of various countries and what i saw was india was at the log phase of the graph which meant that it has plenty of resources and it's still developing we all know that so i just wanted to ask that i mean we have plenty of resources and we're still developing the problem with the country is that there's a very improper management of resources so what as a country we all are doing you know to incorporate research into managing all these resources and getting students involved into that see my belief is that uh, you know i saw recently the economist you know economist uh, your journal comes in this predicts uh, in uh, two, 2016 every 10 workers skilled workers the four will be indians out of in the world out of 10 worker for because of our population you know but uh, but we have to give a skill so i have suggested what is called human resource cadre human resource cadre keeping the the universities and school educate system need to create two cadres personal one cadre is called global cadre of skilled youth with specific knowledge of special skills another global cadre of youth with higher education with special expertise like you are you are all these two cadres should be required uh, not only for powering the manufacturing service sector of the india but also fulfilling the skilled human resource requires globally thus the universities and secondary school education system we will have to work towards increasing the throughput of the university education system from the existing 11% to 15% by the year 2015 20% by 2020 and 25% by the year 2025 30% by 2030 uh, that means our education system with skill and expertise 
we have to we have to modify education system and we have build the people okay yeah let's go good evening sir i am swarnim raj btech first year student uh, my question is that how much will an indian experience foreign pressure if he wants to do some indigenous research on uh, projects as nuclear fusion in order to make hydrogen bomb or uh, human cloning meaning to say will the world support it or uh, will the us try to make a blockade against us in the un no there is a what's happening is for example missile area there is called missile technology control regime okay as per the missile technology control regime the nation for example the nation which has got technology in missile advanced technology is a national like india cannot get it that's why we we became self reliant some of the technologies and missile area okay like agni uh, and uh, also the uh, just now i told you bromos uh, first supersonic cruise missile these are all denied technology denied so we have to develop ourselves uh, so but of course the fusion area what you said there is an international collaboration going on because that is a very difficult area number of people is a work together so many nation are working together in fusion up to they will go up to the reactor you are building a small reactor yes uh, mera ek uh, example hai ki parthenium histophorus naam ki ek weed hai uh, jo ki 1952 mein india mein uh, matlab aaya tha उसके बाद से लगभग मतलब पता नहीं कितने लोग पार्थिन मिस्ट्रोफोरस के बारे में जानते हैं लेकिन आज वो एनुअल बेसिस पे लगभग वन लाख करोड़ रुपीस इंडिया को मतलब हानि पहुंचा रहा है मेरा बायोटेक्नोलॉजी डिपार्टमेंट है कोई मोटिवेशन दिखा नहीं मैंने प्रोफेसर सबसे बात किया कि पार्थिनियम पे काम होना चाहिए तो लोग यहाँ मोटिवेशन मोटिवेट हैं लेकिन इनकरेजमेंट उस ढंग का नहीं मिल पा रहा है देर इज वॉट इज कॉल्ड ग्रास रूट इनोवेशन दिस ग्रास रूट इनोवेशन innovation can be come from anywhere it can be from the laboratory it can come from the fisherman hut it can come from farmers it can come from anywhere it has come but uh, we uh, don't we did not have so far a mechanism to find the grassroots uh, innovation fortunately now there is what is called national innovation foundation has come and this uh, the every year they locate nearly 80 to 100 a uh, grassroots innovators they go to villages mm, and they find for the farmers who have innovated in the ways for way of farming innovated very in the water uh, uh, supply system and uh, innovated the way the cross uh, the crop agriculture crops and uh, agriculture uh, production has improved per hectare these people have been awarded they said now a, a national uh, innovation foundation is government of india has formed to spot the grassroots uh, grassroots innovators particularly the agriculture the another area they are available 600 600000 villages yes i am a research scholar my question is that our education system is itself like that it's continuously killing our creativity so what is your thought on that well i i what that house i started the creativity particularly in the young age is a very important so that asking question having the curiosity so creativity leads to thinking and uh, i have uh, i have uh, told you that how important creative classroom you creative classroom will come only if a creative syllabus is there if you are having the syllabus heavy syllabus we are heavy no then how do you be creative say a young boy or young girl they may they may be good at painting but you have to give a Uh, or a poetry uh, or a mathematics you have to give the opportunity to grow that is young age we have to do so that the education system primary education needs lot of reform and people are working on it i have to take, unfortunately we are running short of time so this is the last question i can't take any more yeah uh, my name is sarthak i am a third year student i just wanted to ask how can we create quality teachers in mass at primary level and at a professorship level <coughs> i can share one experience with you when i was in singapore i went to a school that school a, a school for primary school teachers that teachers will teach up to 8th class that mean up to children of 13 years age so the type of sele- selection process 
they go through for selecting the primary education teachers is a very fantastic there are three tiers three tiers just like our ias you know prime pre preliminary and the main and the interview and series of discussion they select out of thousands of uh, uh, thousand applicants uh, 10 20 30 te teachers give them training and of course they pay also properly they pay also properly so time has come we have to have a creative teachers and we have to spot and we have to pay them that's very important okay okay sure yes let's give her a chance i'm ishika i'm basically an environmental researcher Uh, so number first uh, i'm very overwhelmed to speak in front of you and it's an honor i have been listening to a lot of questions which have been raised innovation and research is it so that here the questions that have been raised were more on innovation research on resources so is it that the research is more stressed towards one area in comparison to other like for example we have climate change we have renewables like for example we want to invest in that i know it's good but even in case of industries we have energy as a separate section but what about water what about other sections which are important and interrelated we have to identify uh, the for india 2020 the vision we have identified five areas okay yeah, number 1 agriculture agro food processing that means we produce 230 million tons of food now our innovation and technology should go production value addition to agriculture produce similarly information communication technology intended connecting 600000 villages we have that is through information technology that is innovation we have to make how to use the wireless system the how to use the fiber optics so reach the villages so that we can carry education or communication and the third area is uh, is the uh, is the infrastructure development and fourth area is the critical technologies so these have been identified and not only agriculture every field we have to, there are five areas are there we have to work on that dr kalam thank you so much for uh, coming on rajya sabha tv india interacts ladies and gentlemen please give a loud applause